In this video, we're going to look at Charles' law. All that you need to know, the graph, the relationship, the formula, and also an example to see how we can apply Charles' law. Charles' law was named after the scientist Jacques Charles, who formulated the original law in his unpublished work back in 1780s. This law describes the relationship between the temperature and volume of a gas. Let's say we have a ball and we inflate it with some gas inside our house. Now, imagine we walk outside of the house and it's freezing cold outside. What happens is the ball that we inflated inside the house is going to deflate a little. Note that the amount of the gas stays the same. It's just that the ball shrunk a little bit. This is because when the temperature decreases, the volume will decrease as well. Now, let's say we use back the same ball and we walk out of the house again and it's a hot sunny day. What do you think will happen to the ball? Yep, it's going to expand a little bit because when the temperature increases, the volume will increase as well. And this is basically what Charles' law is all about. Throughout our going in and out of the house with the ball adventure, the amount of the gas in the ball remained the same. And also, the pressure remained the same. I mean, we didn't move our house. We just stayed in the same place. We didn't move altitudes. So it's not like we move up to the mountains. We just stayed in the same place. So the pressure remained the same. And we didn't let out any gas inside our ball, so both the moles of the gas and the pressure of the system remain constant. The only thing that changed were the temperature and the volume. That's basically what Charles' law is all about. We can graph its relationship like this. When volume increases, temperature increases. And we can say that volume and temperature are directly proportional. And we can rewrite it mathematically to show that when volume is divided by the temperature, it's equal to a constant, which we're just going to randomly call it as k. That means if we have two sets of data, initial and final, we can write it out as v1 divided by t1 is equal to v2 divided by t2. That's the formula of Charles' law. The unit for volume can be anything as long as v1 and v2 are the same. However, Temperature, on the other hand, must be in Kelvin. Like, I can't stress this enough. This is super critical, and that's how most mistakes are done when solving Charles' law problem, is that people get excited when they see the problem, and then they use the temperature in Celsius, and they just plug and solve the problem, and you get the wrong answer. So please make sure that your temperature must be converted to Kelvin. So if your temperature is given in Celsius, make sure that you add 273.15 to the temperature, and that's going to give you the temperature in Kelvin. We're given 25.0 ml, 25 degrees Celsius, 735 millimeter mercury, that's the pressure, and we also have 55 degrees Celsius temperature. And the question asks us to find the volume, so that's V. Now let's go through the question once again to tag our 1 and 2. So we start off with 25 ml at 25 degrees Celsius, with the pressure 735 millimeter mercury. Now all this is in one sentence and it's all referring to one set of condition. So which means that's the initial condition of the gas. And then after that, it's asking us what's going to be its new volume if the temperature increased to 55 degrees Celsius. Now this new volume and 55 degrees Celsius is going to be another set of data. So we're going to attack 25 ml and 25 degrees Celsius and 735 millimeter mercury as 1. And then the volume and 55 degrees Celsius is going to be the second set of data. So we're going to attack it as T2 and V2. Now if you pay attention to the question, you notice that pressure was only mentioned once, the 735 millimeter mercury. There's no new pressure mentioned again, and we're not asked to find anything related to pressure. That means the pressure remain constant. So the only thing that changed in this question is just the volume and the temperature. Let's plan to solve the problem. Since it's only V and T changing, we're going to use Charles' law, which is V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. Now we need to keep in mind that the temperature must be in Kelvin. So we need to convert the temperature first because the temperatures that we have, T1 and T2, they are all in Celsius. So this is where most mistakes are made. You just use that 25 and 55 and you plug it inside the formula, you will get the incorrect answer. 
So we need to first convert it into Kelvin by adding 273.15 and we get 298.15 for T1, 328.15 Kelvin for T2. Now we're ready to plug and solve. Since we're solving for V2, let's do a little bit of math and then we rearrange the formula. So we multiply both sides with T2 so that we can get rid of T2 on the right hand side and that's going to give us V2 which is what we want to find. So V2 is equals to V1 times T2 divided by T1. Now we can literally plug all the information that we have tagged into our new formula and that's going to give us 25 ml times 328.15 Kelvin divided by 298.15 Kelvin and that comes out to be 28 milliliter in two sig fig. With that, we're done talking about Charles Law. I do have a bunch of videos in this gas law series. Definitely check them out. I also have a video that's coming out that's going to help you remember all the formulas for gas law without using much effort. You definitely want to check that one out. All the links are going to be placed in the description box. Here are the two videos that I've handpicked for you. Thanks for watching all the way till the end. If you find this video helpful, be sure to like and share it with someone. Don't forget to subscribe. Your support means a lot to me.